Welcome back to this speed run. We're going from 500 to 2200. We are closing in on 1600, starting out at 1590 today. So the games are getting tougher. Let's get into it. We are playing five plus five, and we are using the Sicilian and the Nimzovich Sicilian if allowed. The opponent plays e5. Um, and now they're thinking a bit. Knight c3 is supposed to be the toughest move. Bishop c4 is okay, but we'll attack that bishop. And bishop b3 would be a giant trap because we would trap it. So the bishop should probably go back. Actually, d3 is also an interesting move. Hmm, that's a weird one. So I could just chase that with a6. I could also think about c4 but then d3. So I think I'll just keep chasing the bishop. And I don't mind to have the move a6 thrown in for free. And now our plan is really to target this pawn. Although, since they already played c3, maybe I'll try d5. And now we're gonna get sort of a French structure. I want to develop my bishop. I don't want to allow d takes c5 tempo. So I'll take this and then I'll develop the bishop. Go to f5. g4 would also be reasonable. But I'm going to play e6. And essentially it's like we're playing a French, but uh, this bishop got to develop outside the pawn chain. And we kind of, we're sort of ahead in development actually. Somehow we already have three minor pieces out. So let's just keep developing the king side and castle, and then maybe think about starting some uh, some play on the queen side. I could even you know try to do some sort of business over there first, but I think I'm just happy to finish development um, before doing anything fancy. And I want to play rook c8 next. Um, I'm happy to trade these bishops. That's my bad bishop for white's good bishop, at least according to the traditional terminology, your bad bishop is the one that's on the same color as your pawns. I did manage to develop it outside the pawn chain, but even so, usually that is white's, um, you know, a good piece for white and a bad piece for black for the French. And now I want to exploit these light squares on the queen side that are somewhat weakened by white, putting all their, um, their pawns on dark squares. So let's see, knight c4, this looks like a good start. I'm hitting this, and if it advances, I would take this one, thanks to the bishop supporting. Okay, is this a trap? Is there something wrong with taking on a3? I can't see that there is, I'll just take. So that looks like a free pawn, that's a great start. And maybe the knight before is, is coming next if they don't stop it. They take. So I guess their idea is they want to play knight g5 and checkmate me, but I can just block. And what's happening now? I don't think they can checkmate me. Okay, knight drops back. Okay, so we won some material. Um, knight b4 is kind of interesting. I think I'm just going to drop this bishop back and then play knight b4 so I don't trap my bishop. I'm, a, I'm up and exchanging a pawn now, so I don't really need to rush it. I can just uh, consolidate my position. Just make sure I don't allow um, anything too crazy to happen. Okay, so the queen's coming over. I don't think my opponent can really do a whole lot to me here. Let's just keep an eye on this knight. So now if queen f4, I would take. My king side's pretty well defended. Really, I'd just love to um, engineer some trades and navigate this to a winning endgame.
want to be a little careful about bringing my king away from the, the queen side, but I think I can afford this. I'm setting up something like knight a2 to force some trades, or maybe going after this. Now if queen d3, I would have played knight d3. Okay, knight comes out. Let's play knight a2. Actually, queen f4, that, that was kind of a bad move, I think. But my opponent let me off the hook. What I, my, what I realized was actually queen f4 threatening a mate. So I would have had to play bishop takes g5. Queen f4, uh, bishop takes g5, queen takes g5. And then queen f6, queen g7 would have been an annoying threat, um, but my opponent um, didn't do that, so I have a little extra time to react to that. I think what I'm going to do is maybe just play bishop f8 now, or even, actually, I think I like this move. Let's go queen c2 and prepare to bring my queen back here. It's always um, including your queen in the defense. It's generally a good idea. Okay, they're blocking my queen from coming back. That's a pretty good move. Let's see, I can play rook c3. Or bishop f8. Let's go for this one just to um, protect the dark squares. Yeah, I'm not exactly convert, converting this uh, as confidently I would, as I would like. Okay, what if I take that? What's going to happen? Queen f4 check, king g8. I don't see what's happening to me here. Is something bad happening? There's no mate because my bishop's defending this. So now we're up a whole rook. So I think this is going to be relatively easy from here. I think the opponent pulled the trigger with this knight sacrifice a little early. They could have um, made my life more difficult by starting with queen f4 or something. Although I think I, I sort of had everything covered. I was going to play rook c7. I have noticed that at these rating levels, these sort of all-out kamikaze attacks are pretty common and they can be kind of annoying to deal with. So obviously we would love a queen trade just to uh, shut down all of these attacking chances. Although at this point, I think it, it is actually pretty, opponent's not really attacking anymore. Let me just do something like this. I could take the d4 pawn, but uh, when you're already up a rook, it's not very important to take additional pawns. Just want to focus on consolidating and um, keeping control of the position.
Okay, I could take on e3. That looks decent. I'm up a rook, so I can afford to give a little material back. Okay, the opponent abandons the game. Yeah, you know what? Um, we got a great position early in the game pretty easily, but then from here, kind of gave my opponent too many chances. I think um, I let me, my pieces drift over to the queen side too much, especially queen a5. You want to keep your queen close to your king when possible. So maybe even something like f5 would have been more appropriate, but we did manage to win in the end. And that puts us to 1598. So one more win uh, will put us over 1600, but we're up against the 1653. So it won't necessarily be easy. And we're going with our ready setup. Black is going for, um, well, speaking of um, crazy attacks. So my opponent wants to play uh, h4. I could play h4 myself to stop this. Um, I mean, I think that would be kind of giving this move a lot of credit, honestly. I could play d4, and they'll play h4. Knight takes h4. They'll sacrifice the exchange. Yeah, I don't think I should be scared of that. Objectively, it shouldn't be good for black. Okay, they don't do it. So I think if you're going to do this, you have to play h4. So I'm just going to keep playing in the center. If black doesn't um, play h4, then this move is purely a weakness. So you kind of, you know, this is a dubious way to play, but if you're going to do it, you have to do it all out, essentially. Okay, what do I want to do now? Probably uh, e4 would be a good... Um, Move to aim for. Let's just uh, let's just keep developing for the moment. X a little bit stuck here. The knight even goes to f eight, so I guess it's going to come to g six. All right, I'll just play queen c two and set up e4. Okay, fine to trade. Yeah, let's open up the center since black is really leaving their king there. Maybe now think about infiltrate on this d6 square. Not really worried about h4, yeah. Let's just involve another piece in the game. C5, knight, d6 is kind of appealing, but I'm also thinking about moving this knight over here. Okay, let me chase this knight back. I feel like this, this move is very loosening. It feels like I should potentially be able to win a pawn here. So I'll chase the knight back to remove one defender from e4, and then I can think about takes, or maybe takes for, yeah, this is, I feel like this, this can't be good, so if I go d takes e5, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, I don't actually have any good discovered checks there, but I could just start with knight g5 immediately, then I guess my opponent would play Bishop f5. Mm. 
Hmm. I mean, there must be a good move here, right? What am I missing? I could just play d5 and create a pass pawn, but that doesn't... What if I just play like knight c3? Or even knight d2? Huh. Yeah, I'm having trouble like really finding a, a good option here. This is weird. It feels like it should be winning. Well, okay, let's just do this. And just pile up on this epon. Yeah, I feel like this is probably not the right continuation, but uh, it's okay. Our position is still is still pretty good, I think. Oops, I missed that one, but this looks good because this is pressured. See, I probably missed a chance to win, win in the middle game there, but my pieces are still a bit more active in this end game. That knight on h6 is, is pretty out of play. So let's try to break down this uh, c6 pawn. See, takes, takes, takes. I'm threatening rook takes e7. I think this is good. I can actually take this here and then fork. Wow, this is a tough game. So I'm going to be up a pawn at the end of this. It's going to be a pass pawn. So I guess this should be winning. It's uh, it's not easy though. And then let's play knight d5, tempo on the rook, and then start pushing the c pawn. I don't know if I'm, <laughs> might not be ready for this uh, 1600 life. Okay, we got got to move has to be to push this. I think. And if bishop c4, probably rook d1, bishop c6, bishop takes d5, c7, bishop e6 doesn't really work. So let's just defend and then push. Just want to get that guy into the end zone. I was assuming my opponent didn't have time to do that. They're hitting my rook, but I'm still just trying to queen. I think I can just go rook c1 here. Save the rook, threaten this. If rook c8, knight e7 check. And if bishop takes d5, I can queen. 
And after rook takes, rook takes, I pick up the bishop. And that should, should do it. Very tough game. Okay, the opponent resigns. Wow. Initial game review says no mistakes. Let's see, what about um, I feel like around this was really the moment where I felt like I must have oops, I don't have the engine lines right now. Yeah, I couldn't quite figure out what to do here. I wanted to do this, but then I thought bishop f5. So the engine thing, maybe just takes, and white has, has an edge, and maybe, so something like this maybe? So I guess there wasn't a clean win. All right, very tough game. But we are in the 1600 club. We had to earn it. Okay, we'll try knight f3 again. Another 1600 opponent. They leave. Black pieces this time. And we get another Sicilian. And it's a Mora, which we will decline and try to transpose to an Alapin. This is how I like to deal with the Mora. Um, you know, obviously, the Mora players want to sacrifice this pawn, so. Um, I prefer to just transpose it to an Alapin and uh, take it from there. Okay, can I play Queen A5 check? I guess I probably can. I could also just play Bishop D7. Queen A5 check, Knight C3, Knight takes C3, Bishop C6, B takes C6, B takes C3. Yeah, actually, I think this is just a free pawn. I think it's worth taking it. And I am going to take this one because now I get to play queen d3 and sort of prevent them from castling. Okay, rook c1, that's fine. So I want to finish developing. I mean, I can also get my bishop out here at some point. Not really concerned about this pawn being taken. Yeah, so how do we get out this dark squared bishop? What about taking here the knight takes? Maybe e6. Or I guess I could also go g6. Like this is what I want to do. And then I have both of these options. And I think I want to keep my queen on this uh, diagonal continue to make it difficult for, for my opponent to castle. That's reasonable. So I'm going to be up a pawn, but it's going to be 
not the best pawn in the world. But I do think I have to go for this anyway. Opponent still has some issues castling. Maybe they should play queen d3. Although then I could actually take a2. I think at some point I want to play c5 and just give that pawn back. But I also want to activate my rooks. Maybe f6. This is the move I want to play just to get this bishop out, and I don't really care about that pawn. Get this bishop out, then I can move my rook to the d file. I probably want to avoid a queen trade because white's king is exposed. Okay, I could play bishop c6, but then queen c4. So I'm going to bring my rooks to these open files. Threatening rook takes d2 check. I have to remember this is attacked. But now also rook b2 check. Actually, rook a3 is kind of probably a, a, a move I should not have allowed. But then I do have rook b4, so I think it's OK. Basically, I'm trying to attack white's king without allowing uh, trades. to get this move and I'm surprised my opponent allowed this and now can't I just play bishop c6 setting this up <clears throat> don't think there's a good answer to this I'm going to take this. So I've got this set up. So there's, I can go queen takes e4, rook takes e4, rook e2, hitting the rook and the bishop. I think that's going to be a relatively simple win. I could also do, try something to keep the queens on the board, but let's keep it simple. Hitting the rook, hitting the bishop. Don't think there's a way to defend both. So 
Let's see if my opponent agrees with me. Looks like they do, they resign. So another clean game. So that brings us up to 16-16. Continuing the grind, uh, that's gonna be it for today. If you want to learn about the Ready or the Nimzovich Sicilian that I played today, check out the link in the description to my courses on those openings. Um, and I will see you next time as we continue climbing through the 1600s.